Hello, lovely humans, Jen Foxbot here. In this video, we are going to generalize back propagation, which is how we minimize our cost function for a particular neural network. And if that was a lot of jargony words, we were like, what? My eyes just glazed over and my brain turned off. All good. Go to the machine learning uh, playlist and start from square one. Start from the first playlist and you will learn these terms as we go. If you understand the neural network stuff, um, but not the back propagation, go watch the previous few videos and you'll be caught up to speed. So let's dig into it. For this, we are going to generalize our back propagation for a, any given number of training examples. Um, and I'm going to write it over here so I save my whiteboard space. So as you can imagine, to train a neural network, you need a lot of training data. So we need to generalize. And so let's say we have m number of training data sets, which are represented by x's and y's, where x is our, um, our kind of input data. So for example, our features, um, if we are using our neural network to make predictions on an image and figure out what is in that image, like an orange or a banana or a squirrel or something like that, the x values would likely correspond to pixel colors and the y values would correspond to the label of the image that we would want the machine learning or AI neural network to um, guess. So in, a, in an actual data set, you're going to have more than just like a single x here. You're going to have um, that's going to be like a matrix of, of values, um, but I'm lazy and I want to just write that like that. Um, but we are going to generalize to m number of training data points like that. And so um, to start to generalize back propagation, we are going to define a term, um, which is a fun capital delta and little triangle buddy. Um, but maybe a rounded corners triangle buddy. And so we are going to set this equal to zero for all i, j, and l. What are those variables? L, the layer that you are in. i is a particular node in that layer, and j is a particular parameter for that node. Cool. And so this will be used to calculate the partial derivative of our cost function, which again is how we minimize the cost function. Because going back to calculus, if you um, make a plot of a parabola, the goal is to get to the minimum where the slope is zero, because that means that you have, well, found the minimum. Aha, calculus. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, so this is where we go through our forward prop. Um, and then do back prop. So, okay, so first, um, so this works for i equals one. So for our um, first node in a layer to m, our, num our uh, total number of training examples. Um, yes, yes, yes. So basically for x i, um, comma y i, and I'm using parentheses because I don't want you to think that they're squared to the i power. Um, that is to indicate which number of training data we're looking at. So the first step here is to set our first nodes equal to the training data, right? Because in the layer, uh, in layer one, this is where we input our x values. X goes into here. So this is our training data. Our training data seeds our neural network, which is good because that's how we get it to be accurate. <laughs> okay, so in the first layer, our nodes are set equal to um, x. Um, so however many x values we have, we set those equal to um, the nodes. Okay, and now we do forward prop. Ah, how do I write forward? <laughs> forward prop. So we covered this in a previous video. This is basically how we get the parameters and the activation values for each of these nodes. Remember, that's what A equals. It's the 
activation value for the node, and that is equal to um, a set of parameters. So for example, a one, or well, a, I'll generalize this, equals like some parameter times x, whatever. Yeah, okay, you get it. Um, I don't want to spend too much time with that because we already covered it. Okay, so you do forward prop to get la 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 each activation node in all of the layers. Um, and uh, this is for um, L equals two, three, all the way to however many layers you have, because again, this is just a representation. Your neural network is probably going to be way bigger. Uh, large language models, when they say it has like 7 billion parameters, it means it has like, well, I guess parameters would be in each node, but it will have lots of layers and lots of nodes. So that's why software engineering is great. That's why coding is great. And we'll see that in a little bit. Actually, we're going to kind of write in a loop, which is fun. Okay, so now that we have gotten the activation layers for each of the nodes, I'm doing forward propagation, we can compute the error in each of those nodes. Basically, okay, we ran through this, we got some values. How accurate are those initial values to our predicted values? Now we need to do that comparison. And so this is where we start to do back prop. So you use your known values, y, from the training data to find the error for each of the layers. So first you start with the last layer and you calculate the error from the last layer compared to your actual training data. Okay, that. Um, it's getting a little smushed with my layers. Um, and then you uh, move backwards back prop. <laughs> hey, there's the name. There it is. There's the title for each of the previous layers. And so to generalize, um, you compute or find the error for each subsequent layer. Um, so like in this case, it would be layer three and then layer two. So you just get all the way back down to the error in the second layer. And as a refresher, you do not need to find the error in your first layer because theoretically there shouldn't be an error because that's your input. That's your training data input. So hopefully the error is zero if it was if it was set up correctly. Um, okay. Um, in other words, you don't need to find D1 equals zero. I'll make that a little better. Okay. So uh, now... Our next step is to compute the error for the whole network. So this is where I'm going to write in like a math loop um, and I'm going to be kind of lazy. Um, so the error sum total for all of the layers, all of the nodes, and all of the parameters, we are going to do a plus equals um, to define a loop where we just sum up all of those errors. So we are going to do that by, this is a, com a compounding, right? Because um, any, any node or any parameter that gives us um, an error, we need to add that up because those all contribute to how accurate or not our neural network is. And so um, we add the compounding. We start with zero. So the first run through this loop, it's zero. But then we add the value of the activation node in a given layer times the error of that um, of that layer of the of the former layer. Okay, so this is where we get our our error that we need to compound. Um, and then we also should probably vectorize this. I'm going to kind of write this off to the side really quickly. Um, so just for funsies, to vectorize, you would do this. Um, so we have our compounding error. 
So we start with, this is going to start with zero, but then we got to add it on as we go, as it get, as that's how it gets bigger. Um, and I'm going to run out of space. L plus one times A to the L layer and then transpose of A. Okay, that's really the key is that you got to take the transpose of the activation nodes. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, so now um, just a couple more steps. So now we're at step three. Oh, I'm going to run in. Move, move my little step three down a little bit so I don't run into the previous step. Holy smokes, I might actually fit everything. Okay. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It's getting a little smushy. I hope you can read this. Okay. Um, okay, so now we are going to set uh, a define an accumulator. So this is capital D. And again, uh, this is basically just um, summing up all of the errors and kind of taking that um, like a, an average, basically. Um, so to do that, uh, again, we're going to write like a little loop because um, we have to sum these up. So we're going to divide by the total number of training examples. That's kind of where that average comes in. And we, multi we uh, divide our total error. Um, and then we add in any regularization we have. Um, la la la. The L. And this is for when J is not zero. And if J is zero, then uh, D. Oh, am I going to be able to fit this? Uh, yes, I totally can. I believe in myself. D I J plus equals one over M triangle. I should say delta the layer um for j equals zero okay cool last step all right okay so now this is actually just the partial derivative of our cost function so that's that's actually it yay we did it we did it we fit all the things um j of i always want to do the theta in a funky way this way Okay, um, equals D I J for each layer. Okay, huh. boom, there we go. So this is how we actually calculate the partial derivative of our cost function with respect to theta. Um, and basically how we figure out how to minimize the cost function. Um, because the goal is to get this as small as possible. And I think that this is really cool too because you can see how each of the nodes and each of the pieces of the nodes, each of the parameters of our neural network nodes contribute to the total accuracy or not of our neural network. And what's wild to me is like these values can be, can vary, right? And they all contribute to get a single value output, which is awesome. Um, and remember, in a neural network, we're using the sigmoid function. Um, so our hypothesis function is going to be somewhere between 0 and 1, uh, which basically we translate into um, a, uh, uh, a percentage or confidence level. So for example, it's, it's like if I say I'm 85% confident that this random fact that I have in my head is accurate. And so if you're a little skeptical of that, you'd be like, well, there's 15% chance that you could be wrong. I'm like, absolutely. So double check me. Or if I say I'm 30% confident that this is right, you're like, I'm definitely going to check you. So that's what our neural network is doing. That is the actual output of our hypothesis function. And with the training data, the goal is to get um, that, uh, that confidence level to be... Um, to match the training data exactly. So theoretically, um, when we compare the performance of our model on the training data, it should, you know, the error should be zero, theoretically. But that's why we have to go through a number of iterations with our training data. Um, and then, of course, you, you have to test the model on new data that you know, so that you know that you didn't like kind of over index on your training data. Anyway, this is the math behind that. I think that's really cool because it kind of like peels back the layers of how chat GPT works under the hood. 
um, a little, this is kind of simplifying, but this, the foundations. Cool. Okay. So fun. We did it. Yay. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I will see what other topics we could cover in neural networks. Um, there's kind of some, there's a lot of other stuff that we could cover. Um, let me know if there's anything looking through my notes of the class that I took. Um, let me know if there's anything in particular you want to learn and we can, uh, we can add it to the agenda. All right. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.